Welcome to Classic Game Room. This is the Tiger GameCom, released in 1997, a handheld game console that was years ahead of its time with internet connectivity, touch screen, and dual cartridge slots. Misunderstood game system or horrible abomination? We'll find out on Classic Game Room. Gamecom active. In 1997, Tiger Electronics unleashed a wounded house cat of a game system, the Gamecom, one of the least successful game systems that you'll ever find, but it's not without merit. It would be easy to blindly drag this thing through the mud for a few minutes, but it actually tried to do quite a bit that was ahead of the time. And sadly for Tiger Electronics, failed at all of it because of one crippling feature. Start your engine. The worst screen that I've ever seen. The race begins from a rolling start. Ready, go. Having a bad screen on a handheld game system is like having bad speakers on a stereo. It completely defeats the purpose and ruins the primary output mechanism for fun. But I'll get to that in a moment. Styling-wise, the Gamecom is a nice handheld, and I love the dual cartridge slots. In the days before you could just pack your memory card or hard drive or whatever with thousands of games, the Gamecom allowed you to take two of them with you at any given time. And select them with a touch screen years before the Nintendo DS was released. But did you want to play any of the games released for this thing? Even top shelf games such as Resident Evil 2, Duke Nukem 3D, and Mortal Kombat couldn't persuade people to buy a Gamecom. But it has a pen, and that's not all, it also has a calculator, so you can finally ditch that abacus. Tired of storing all of your friends' phone numbers and contact information in a Rolodex? Well, the Gamecom can do that too, digitally, bringing your life into the space age. But none of this was enough to make anyone care, including third-party developers and the press who just ignored this thing. Let's face it, you could buy a Game Boy. But, as I said, the Gamecom is not without merit. Look at this, it has a high score feature saving the high scores of games you've played. Now that's pretty cool. It also comes with Solitaire, and there's a game available called Lights Out, so the only thing the Gamecom was any good at was puzzle games, which have little or no motion because this thing can't even play Joust properly. But wait, doesn't this thing talk to the internet? Well, not anymore. But it did, I'm not sure what it actually would do, but it would talk to the internet in some fashion. Forward thinking into the 21st century, yes, but with a screen that brings it back to the 19th century, the Gamecom falls somewhere between the Edison Cylinder Player and a broken Atari 2600. Yet somehow it managed to get a decent library of games. At least from the packaging standpoint, the boxes look nice even if the games don't. So, a big thank you to our friend Chip from Alabama for sending the Gamecom along with these games to the show. It's a fascinating piece of video game history, one that can be found easily today on eBay. The games are also extremely cheap because they're not in demand. In conclusion, the Gamecom isn't much for playing games, but it does have one really useful feature. When the robot invasion finally comes in the year 2084, and the robots take away your useful electronic devices, they'll ignore your Gamecom. And all of the phone numbers and technical data stored within its digital Rolodex that you can use to defeat the robots. As well as a pen, which can double as a sword. It's the Gamecom, savior of the future.